I want to test micro crystalline wax to see if it's something I would like to use on my wood turnings. I've read about micro crystalline wax occasionally. There is a product, of course, Renaissance Wax, uh, which is a blend of micro crystalline wax and other things. Uh, there's a few other commercial products available, but I've never used it before. I've seen other wood turners uh, videos and uh, articles, and they swear by it. Greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, but I never have bought any because I always thought it was too expensive. Used to come only in a fairly good sized tin and it ran about 30 or 32 dollars or something like that which is like uh, uh, borderline wallet cringing for me. But recently Renaissance Wax, uh, I don't know how recently, but I recently noticed that you can get a smaller tin now of the Renaissance Wax for around 15, 16 dollars and I'm willing to risk that much money. So I want to test the micro crystalline wax for three things. One is appearance, shininess. I like really, really shiny uh, wood turnings. And I do all my small stuff uh, with friction polish because it comes up with a really good shine. I want to see if I coat the, the finishes that I normally use with friction polish <laughs> with uh, micro crystalline wax. Will it give me a better finish, a shinier finish, than carnauba wax or than no wax at all? I also want to test it for a couple of things that uh, it is supposed to be really good for, and that is wear resistance, fingerprint resistance, and water resistance. Um, it's going to be hard to test for some of those, perhaps, but I'm going to make an attempt to do it. Now, I've got uh, some spindles of wood that I divided into three pieces, a long spindle with three sections in it. And on each section, I'm going to put one type of wax. The first one's going to be Renaissance wax. Second one is going to be a pure micro crystalline wax. That is, it's not a blend of anything else, just plain old micro crystalline wax. And the third section is going to get carnauba wax. I'll apply the wax, I'll polish it up, uh, and then I'll take a look at it and see how does it look. I've got four different spindles of four different woods. And on each one of those spindles, I have a different type of finish. I've got tongue oil. I've got one that's finished with friction polish. I've got one that's finished with a wiping varnish. And I've got one that's finished with just a sanding sealer, which is really just diluted uh, shellac. So on those four spindles, I'll apply the polish, polish it up, uh, and check it out and see what happens between the three types of waxes on those woods and those finishes. After that I'll attempt to uh, see what the wear resistance might be by kind of getting my hands dirty, maybe a little bit uh, uh, body oil on it or something like that, running the lathe at a low speed and pushing my fingers against it. I don't have time to sit the, uh, the piece out for several years and handle it once or twice a day, so I'm going to try and simulate a lot of uh, handling by doing it rather quickly on the lathe. We'll see what happens there. And finally, water resistance. Uh, not too hopeful I'm going to see anything there because it is a spindle. It's round. Water I drip on it's just going to roll off. So I don't know if uh, I'll actually be able to tell anything there. It will be interesting to see what else might come up. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to go back to my computer. Uh, and just give you some background on exactly what micro crystalline wax is and uh, what the products are that you can buy or where you can buy the pure stuff. All right, let's get started. Back at the computer, let's take a look at micro crystalline wax just uh, briefly to see what it really is. Micro crystalline wax, as you can see right here, this is the formal definition of it is derived from petroleum refining and that of course makes it quite a bit different from beeswax and carnauba wax which we're familiar with. Uh, beeswax and carnauba wax are much closer to nature. Uh, beeswax coming from bees and carnauba wax coming from carnaubas. <laughs> That's a little wax joke. Carnauba wax really comes from a plant in South America. Uh, but. Um, uh, microcrystalline wax, it gets its name because its its crystal structure of the wax itself is, 
is very fine, much finer than paraffin, which is also derived from petroleum. Microcrystalline wax is fairly hard, fairly flexible, and uh, that leads to its resistance to fingerprints. That fine crystalline structure uh, also enables the wax to uh, bind solvents or oils, and this probably is what helps it uh, resist dirt and, and wear more. Now, there's three categories micro crystalline wax, as you can see right here. Uh, generally, the kind that we're interested in is, is this one right here, the hardest one. Uh, 85 to 95 degrees, that's about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is its melting point. The melting point of um, carnauba wax is uh, about 180 degrees, as I recall. As you can see right here, there are a lot of different uses of microcrystalline wax other than just putting on wood turnings. Um, it's used in cosmetics and making candles and making certain artist products, uh, packaging, adhesives, chewing gum, ink, plastics, uh, custom jewelry making. There's probably a lot of other things it's used in as well. And uh, if you're looking for it online, you're going to find uh, different colors of it from uh, dark brown to almost white, depending on the amount of refining of the wax after it's extracted from the petroleum process. So let's switch over and look at Renaissance Wax. Renaissance Wax is a commercial product that is pretty much mostly microcrystalline wax. Renaissance Wax is where I first ever heard about this. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. Renaissance Wax was developed back in the 1950s by the British Museum, uh, and they needed something that would protect wood and metal museum exhibits uh, better than what they currently had, and they found the microcrystalline wax would resist fingerprints, wear, water, alcohol, better than uh, other coatings that they had been using. Now, the, in 1968, the London-based company Picreator uh, began commercial production and distribution of Renaissance wax, uh, making it available to the common folks such as us. According to the MSDS for, micro, for uh, Renaissance wax, it is not classified as hazardous. Though I'm not sure I'd eat it, but I don't feel the necessity of putting uh, rubber gloves on when I handle it in the workshop either. There are a few other products uh, that are similar to Renaissance Wax uh, that I've managed to track down anyway, and there's probably some that I don't have here. Um, Woodcraft carries one uh, called Doctor's Woodshop Micro Crystal Wax Bowl Finish, which is a mixture of walnut oil and micro crystalline wax. Then there is uh, Dr. Kurtz Versa Wax Micro Crystalline Polishing Wax. And I think I found this on, uh, yes, Woodturner's Catalog or Craft Supplies. Another product I found, uh, this is on Woodcraft, is Bora Protect Tool Wax Polish. So here we see micro crystalline wax being used as a protector for metal. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to be using micro crystalline wax to uh, wax the uh, bedways of my lathe. All right, let's switch back to the workshop now. Late breaking news. Uh, this is a product I had missed uh, a little bit earlier when I was preparing the video, Hampshire Sheen. Hampshire Sheen has a number of different waxes, uh, and apparently uh, all or at least a few of them contain micro crystalline wax. Uh, a blend of food safe Danish oil, carnauba wax, and micro crystalline wax. And one of their products right down here is apparently the micro crystalline wax is uh, fingerprint water resistant. And apparently, it doesn't mention carnauba wax here, so this is probably all micro crystalline wax. And Hampshire Sheen also has their corna crystalline wax stick, which is. Uh, features both carnauba wax and microcrystalline wax. All right, let's move on again.